This video is brought to you by SmoothOn and Tested.com. Hey everyone, it's Bill Duran here from Punished Props and welcome to the fourth installment, the final installment of the Tested District 9 rifle build. In the last few videos that you should definitely watch before you see this one, spoilers, we built the master, we made some stuff on the lathe, we made some molds, and in the last one we made a giant matrix mold. In this one, we're gonna be casting and painting all of the wonderful pieces for this gun, assembling it, and finalizing the entire piece. So most of the smaller pieces of this gun were done with simple dump molds. Usually there are one or two piece molds and we would just mix up a little bit of resin. In this case, we used a whole bunch of Smoothcast 300 and some So Strong tint to make them a dark gray color. We mix up the resin and then just dump it in the mold and let it cure. Once the urethane resin cures, it can be popped out of the mold and we've got a perfect copy of our original masterpiece. The big tube on the bottom of the gun was a different story. I didn't want that to be a full solid piece. I'd waste a whole bunch of resin and it would be really, really heavy. So instead, I did some rotocasting. Again, a little bit of resin, in this case, Onyx Fast, was mixed up and poured into the mold. Then I slushed the resin around, just rotating a whole bunch to coat the whole inside of the mold. I did this a couple of times until there was a nice thick layer on the inside of the mold. Then the piece could be popped out again like the rest of them and we had another perfect copy. The giant matrix mold was a totally different story. Again, I didn't want to just dump in a bunch of resin to make a fully solid piece. It would waste a ton of resin and it would be ridiculously heavy. So instead, I opened the mold halves and each half I poured in a little bit of resin. Again, we used uh, Smoothcast 300 for this and I left it untinted too because it cures white and the main color on this gun is white. So I figured that made sense. So I poured in resin on either side to capture the details. And then on one of the sides, I stuck in some insulation foam blocks. These were stuck in when the resin was still curing so that they would kind of adhere to it after it cured. This way, when we closed up the mold, they would stay in place, which is exactly what we did next. The mold got closed up, bolted together, and then we started pouring in resin in stages. We'd add it a little bit at a time, and my athletic wife, Brittany, would slush it around a whole bunch to make sure we didn't trap any giant bubbles inside of there. We did this in like three or four stages until we finally filled up the entire mold with resin and let it cure all the way. Like the rest of the pieces, once it was fully cured, it could be liberated from the mold, leaving a perfect copy of our master. Then, after a little bit of sanding and cleanup work, all of the parts were ready for paint. For the most part, we would just prime them all with some rattle cam primer to get them ready to go for color. Then the base color was laid down on all of the parts. Most of them were just black or white. In the case of this big fella right here, we added just a whole bunch of white over the entire thing. Then we could start adding on more and more layers of color. We did this by putting down some pieces of masking tape to cover the areas we wanted to keep and then by spray painting or airbrushing all of the other areas we wanted to be a new color. In the case of the main gun body, we did this a couple of times to get the orange layer and then to add a black layer later on. Some of the other areas were a little bit more fine detailed, so I just used a brush to paint them in. This gun has some really cool decals and logo type things on it. I made some stencils using my vinyl cutter and then laid down that low tack stencil vinyl onto the piece and dabbed my paint on using just a normal brush. Once the paint was nice and dry, I could peel that stencil away, leaving a really cool looking design behind. At this point, I could also start attaching pieces to the gun. A lot of the little pieces, like the barrels, uh, got screws added to them so that they could be socked into place and nice and secure. And those side sort of heat sink greebles, those got added too. That big hollow tube that I made that goes on the bottom, I added a screw and a bolt to that so that it could be unscrewed and detached for shipment. Then the entire thing got hit with some matte clear coat to protect all that wonderful paint that we threw down. And then it was time for weathering. For the most part, we just did a whole bunch of dirty washes over the entire thing, which is uh, very apparent when you have a white gun. It gets dirty really fast. Most of this was just acrylic paints that got laid over everything 
uh, and then cleaned off a whole bunch using paper towels. Once it was dirty enough, it was time to attach to all of those crazy barrel tube thingies that go on there. There's 24 of them. So I painstakingly glued them in one at a time, uh, making sure they were all nice and lined up. Then I did a little bit more weathering around the bases of those tubes to make sure they sort of faded in. Made sense and fit with the rest of the piece. The last, the last little bit, tiny bit of detail, I mixed up a little bit of tint and some epoxy and then dripped it on part of the gun to make it look like some sort of weird alien ooze. And that's it. <laughs> the whole freaking thing is done. Bask in its glory. Ooh. Uh, this was a crazy project. We did it in about three weeks. And I keep saying we because my wife Brittany helped out a whole bunch on uh, a lot of the build processes. She did a lot of the casting and a lot of the painting of little pieces. And I couldn't have done it without her. She is amazing. Also, of course, again, thank you so much to Smooth On for providing the molding and casting materials. They worked out great. And of course, thank you to the guys over at Tested, whom I will be hanging out with during San Diego Comic-Con. See you there, you guys. Of course, thank you to you for watching this video and sticking around for the entire process. If you have any questions about the build, let me know in the comments down below or hit me up on Twitter, at Chinbeard. Until the next big build, you guys, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and I will see you all next time.